Welcome AP Calculus to our next lesson. This is section 2.4. I'm glad you could join us for the IVT. IVT stands for Intermediate Value Theorem. So in this lesson we're going to be looking at a continuous function and what the IVT means is that you're going to pass through every single y value. So you're going to pass through every single y value on that continuous function. And so let's take, let's take a look at that definition. For the IBT, it says, if a function is continuous on a closed interval, A to B, so here's A, hopefully my pointer's working, here's A, and then this closed interval means this function is continuous, so you have that red line, and then there's B, and K is any number between F of A and F of B. F of A is this Y value, and F of B is this Y value. So when X is A, that's going to give you a Y value, we're going to call that F of A. When X is B, you get a Y value and that's F of B. So again, we have a continuous function on the closed interval A to B, and K is any number between F of A and F of B. In other words, K is going to be right here, let's say for example. So there's K. Actually, let's, yeah, let's, that's K. Uh, so there is at least, there's a K between F of A and F of B, then there is at least one number C in the interval A and B. So if I follow K, if I kind of like plot K, the Y value, then that means there exists a C. And there's my C value between A and B, such that F of C equals k. So this k value is also going to be called f of c. Alright, so that's what we're saying. So some examples, some real life examples for you to understand this would be uh, when you're born. So age is kind of like think of this as you're being when you're born you weigh very little. So you're born and you weigh very little. But as time goes on, as you get older, maybe one year old, two years old, three years old, um, you, your weight starts to increase. So that would be a continuous function. You could definitely apply IVT because uh, let's say this is four, let's say this is um, C. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we know since you know, age is continuous, you can't like magically skip through time, at least not yet. For this C value, there corresponds a certain weight to that. There corresponds an F of C value. There corresponds what we call that K value. Um, another example for you of IVT, I like to think, this is my favorite example, this is Starbucks because I love my coffee in the morning. So if you were to go to Starbucks and buy some coffee, that coffee would be around 90 degrees in terms of temperature. So 90 degrees is somewhere here. Um, let me get my highlighter, see if that will work for us. So somewhere here is that uh, coffee and as time goes on in minutes, that temperature of that coffee is decreasing decreasing eventually we'll get room temperature room temperature is about 10 degrees Celsius and so we could safely assume that that coffee from 90 degrees should eventually pass 50 degrees Celsius so what IVT is saying is we're gonna pass through every single Y value uh, between an interval between an X interval um, in this case let's say time is zero minutes and let's say we have time here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's say this is 8 minutes. Somewhere between 0 and 8 minutes, there should be, um, I'm going to call this C, whatever that C value is, there should be a place uh, where the temperature is between 0 and 90 degrees. Um, and that C value um, corresponds to a, a Y value. And so that's what we're saying. There's an F of C. There's a Y value that corresponds to that C. As long as that C is between 0 and 8. And that would be our closed interval. So let's look at our first example. Go 
ahead and take a moment to write that down if you need to pause the video so you have this in your notes. So this example says, use IVT to verify the function f of x equals 2x minus 1. So use IVT to verify the function in the interval from 1 to 3 such that f of c equals 4, the y value equals 4. So this right here, that would be our y value. So we have to apply IVT. So there's a couple conditions when we, are, when we use IVT. There's like a little checklist. So let's write this down. This is our checklist. The first checklist is that your function, in this case our f function, has to be continuous. So f of x is continuous on the interval. Our interval in this problem is from 1 to 3 when x is 1 and goes all the way to 3. And if you look at back to our notes, uh, we have, I'm going to highlight this in yellow, it says the function is continuous on a closed interval. So that's the first checklist. Is our function continuous on our interval? And the answer is yes. I'm going to go to check here, yes. Because our function is 2x minus 1. That's a linear function and it's basically a straight line. It's a continuous straight line. Um, you could graph it and you'll see that it's a continuous line on the interval 1 to 3. Our second uh, checklist is we have to check our our intervals, our endpoints. We're going to check f of 1. So when x is 1, what do we get? And we have to check what happens when you plug in 3 for x. So remember in this problem, the interval is right here. This is your interval from 1 to 3. And those are your x values. So this let's call this x sub 1 and x sub 2. It's kind of like your start and your finishing x value. So we start at 1, we end up at 3. Those are our x values. So let's figure out what do we get for y. When you plug in 1 into our function, you have uh, 2 times 2 times 1 minus 1. I'm plugging into the f function. I'm, x is 1, so I'm just plugging 1. So we have 2 minus 1 and that gives us 1. So that's our y value. Then for the next part, f of 3, plug in 3 into x and you get 2 times 3 which is 6 minus 1 and that gives us 5. So those are our y values. So what we're saying is f of 1 our y value is a number that's between uh, f of c and that f of c should be in the middle, it should be between f of 1 and f of 3 in order for IVT to work. f of 1, our result, I'm going to do this in a different color here, f of 1 our result was one. We did the math, we got one. F of four, sorry, F of C is four. That was given to us in the problem. F of C equals four. That was our Y value in the problem. F of three was five. So is that true? Is F of C between F of one and F of three? Yes. Four is between one and five. And this is what we're saying. Since the conditions of the theorem are satisfied, the IVT guarantees that there will be at least one value of C such that F of C equals 4. Take a moment to pause the video if you want to reread that to understand what that sentence is saying. So what we're saying is that there exists a C value between, um, between 1 and 3. And so here is a little picture for you to help you understand this. So we in this picture, and I'm going to grab my highlighter again, here's 1, right? That's, that's the interval, 1, and here's 3. So in my graph, here's 1. Here's three. That's 
that's the interval we're kind of like looking at one to three now the y values you see them there i'm gonna grab a different highlighter this is the y value when x is three this is the y value when x is one when x is one our y value is one so let me just write that there this is one so the question is what is the c value we're trying to figure out is there a c value some some x number that'll give us a y value of four that's the big question so if i could grab my little marker here uh, i want to get this y value of four so can i find this somewhere over here maybe somewhere between two and three there's some c value such that i get four f of c is four so in order to find that in order to find that c value this is how we're going to approach the problem we know our function is 2x minus 1, right? That's our function. f of x is 2x minus 1. So let's write that down. f of x is 2x minus 1. f of c, wherever you have an x, just plug in c. 2c minus 1. But we know that f of c is 4. That was what we're trying to find. So set the equation f of c, set f of c equal to 4. And now we're going to solve for C. Divide both sides by 2. C is equal to uh, 2 and a half, or 5 halves. And that's our C value when we want to get 4 as our Y value. So our C value is 5 halves. And you can see that in the graph. Two and a half gives us a y value of, of four. All right, let's go to our next example. Use the IVT to verify the function f of x equals four plus three x minus x squared in the interval two to five, such that f of c equals one. Again, this is a y value y value all right so in our checklist do you remember what our first checklist was is our function is our function our function is f is f continuous so in order for ivt to work our function has to be continuous our function is a quadratic x squared 4 plus 3x minus x squared in our case, we have a quadratic, and quadratics are continuous. So, yes, I'm going to put checklist number one, we're done. Our function is continuous. Number two, so we have to check continuity, which we did for step number two. We have to use our endpoints. So our x values, we have x sub 1 and x sub 2. So if you take the 2 and plug it into your function and you're going to get an answer and we're going to do the same thing with 5 plug it into our function you're going to get an answer. The question is is f of c in between those two answers? In between f of 2 result and f of 5 result. So let's figure it out. Let's do the math f of 2 we know our function is this quadratic the f of x function so let's plug in 2 f of 2 let's do the math is 4 plus 3 times 2 which is 6 minus x squared but it's going to be 2 squared all right so 4 plus 6 is 10 minus 2 squared which is 4 and we get 6 so f of 2 is 6. I'm going to box that in so I know that's my answer. Now let's do f of 5. So f of 5 x 
minus x squared. So 4 plus 15 minus 25. 4 plus 15 is 19. 19 minus 25 is 6. So f of 5 is negative 6. So f of 5 is negative 6. So we're going to write this like this. f of 5 is, our answer is negative 6, is on the left side. On the right side, we're going to put f of 2. Because f of 2 is uh, 6. And f of c equals in the middle. They tell us in the problem f of c equals 1, so there is 1. So f of 5 is negative 6, f of c is 1, f of 2 is 6. The question is, is the number 1 in between the endpoint y values? Is 1 between negative 6 and 6? And the answer is yeah. The number 1 is between a negative number and a positive number. Uh, in this case, 1 is between there's 0, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 4, 5, 6. The number 1 is right in between the negative 6 and the 6. So our second condition is checked. Uh, let me write that up here. Second condition is checked. We can definitely use, uh, we can definitely verify IVT. Now that we verified IVT, we checked continuity, we checked um, that the y value is between uh, the x values that were given to you, we can find c. We can find the value of c that is guaranteed by IVT. So this is how we're going to find c. Since f of c equals 1, right? We know that was given to us in the problem uh, right here. Okay, they give you the y value. They also give you the function, right? They give you our function. So our function is 4 plus 3x minus x squared. So we're going to use our function now. But instead of x, we're going to plug in c. Since IVT works, then we should be able to find the c value, right? Since IVT works, we could figure out what f of, we could figure out the c value. f of c is one. That was given to you, to you in the directions. Since IVT works, we should be able to find the c value. So now let's solve, let's solve for c. So to solve for c, uh, what we're gonna do, since this is a quadratic, we're gonna have to solve using either factoring or the quadratic formula. So what I'm going to do is put the 1 on the right side. I'm going to subtract 1 to both sides. So I end up with 0 equals 4 minus 1 is 3. Now what I'm going to do, because I don't like having that negative c squared, I'm going to move all of these terms to the, to the left side of the equation. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to take the opposite of every sign. So add c squared, subtract 3c, subtract 3. I'm moving that to the left. Add c squared, subtract 3c, subtract 3. So my new equation is positive c squared minus 3c minus 3 equals 0. That's my quadratic. Now in order to solve the quadratic, you could try to factor that, but you'll see that it's not factorable. So we're going to use quadratic formula. Alright, so we're solving for C. I use this song to help me remember. C. C equals negative root plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. That's the quadratic formula. And so that's what I'm going to be using. A is 1. There's the invisible one. Let's, let's get my marker here. A is this invisible one right here. B is negative 3, which is this guy right here. Negative 3, that's B. And C is negative 3. 
that's the last number, the number after the the single variable term. So c is negative three. So now let's plug in the numbers into the quadratic formula. Negative b negative and a negative b positive. Uh, b squared, which is negative three squared. Four times a c a and c. One times negative three is negative three. All over two a, which is two. Clean this up a little bit more. You get three plus or minus nine plus twelve all over two. Three plus or minus twelve plus nine is twenty one. Square root of twenty one all over two. So if you type that into your calculator to simplify, you're going to get c equals 3.79 or negative 0 0.7, some negative number, some negative number, negative 0.7. Uh, however, this negative number is not in the interval, if you go back to our problem, is not in the interval between 2 to 5 right x1 and x sub 2 on the x-axis you're looking for a number between 2 and 5 and the only number between 2 and 5 is the positive 3 this is your your answer this is your answer that's your c value this negative is not in the interval that was given to you between 2 and 5 only look at what's in the interval and in this case it's 3.79 so that's your c value we were looking for a c value between uh, 2 and 5 when x was 2 and when x was 5 all right so that's ivt there's a couple more things you can do with ivt but um this was a good little introduction for you to understand what that is um all right thank you for watching the video take care bye bye